What is up, YouTube? What is up, family? We have we have some more PTX. We got some more Pentatonics. Patreon requests Pentatonics talking about their voices. Their magnificent voices. Anyway, let's go. Let's check it out. I mean, what could they possibly say? Uh, yeah, mine's awesome. Kirsten? Yeah, mine's awesome, too. Uh, Mitch? Yeah, mine's awesome, too. Uh, Kevin? Uh, I'm just awesome at everything. I do everything. Okay. Uh, Matt? Hey. Yeah, it's awesome. My voice is awesome, too. Okay, there you go. There you have it. I just settled it. All right, well, let's see what they think, though. I'm going to introduce the band really quickly before we move along. The bass line you're hearing is our bass man, Matt Sully. <laughs> Over here, we have our queen, alto soprano, Kirsten Maldonado, everyone. Over here is the one and only Mitchell Grassi Arteta. And then I think that we need a beat. Give it up for our beatboxer, K.O. And my name is Scott. I am the baritone of the group. And we are Pentatonics. Excited to be back in New Jersey, y'all. Uh, Cassie, what would you define your role as in the group? Um, well... I'm the only girl, but I fill out kind of the higher harmonies or we'll trade off solos here and there. So Lovely. Okay. Yeah. Mitch, you are? The tenor, but um, sometimes I uh, I dabble in the alto range as well. With <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we switch off a little He's bit. He's multi-talented. Yeah. And Scott? And I'm like the baritone, so not the bass, but low as well. Okay, pretty low. Yeah. Yeah. And your voice was kind of leading through the middle of that. Totally, yeah. For that <laughs> particular song we just did, I had the solo. Sure, okay. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. think what the trio does, that stays pretty set, but I think Matt and I could just mm. have some fun. And yeah. Just, you know, the riff the riffs. Yeah, the riffs. Yeah, the riffs. Yeah, it yeah, doesn't yeah. always go well. <laughs> But I try to change up. It also, like, later in the tour when we're on, like, show 37, that's when I start changing things up to keep it fresh. <laughs> Is there ever a moment where you're running through the song and somebody goes a little hot, like somebody's an over-riffer a little bit, maybe you got to be pulled Guilty. back? Oh, is that you? Uh, <laughs> is that you? Where they yeah, sit you down I and go, Scott, listen, year, man. <laughs> bring it back a little bit. Dial it back. How does, it, how does that work? How does yeah, that We're super work? honest. Yeah, I think we're all able to be really, really honest with each other. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, when we started out, it was like, we didn't really know each other. They knew each other, but we didn't all know each other. So we were yeah. just totally open and honest about everything. And it wasn't, it was never a feelings thing. It was just like, oh, hey, like you're flat here. Or maybe we don't do this. Or maybe yeah. we don't do that. It was never mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm hurt that you said that. Right. Exactly. You know? Always good communication. We take emotions out totally. of it. Yeah. Thank goodness. Yeah. No, I know. I want to sing in my lower register. That's what I'm telling you. I'm over singing high. Well, we all did choir at one point and acapella stuff, and um, but I feel like a lot of us took private voice lessons, and okay. um, even now some of us are still taking voice lessons. But you didn't study it at a college or, or something or at a school. Oh yeah, we we all yeah. did. Yeah, um, you Scott, all did. Yeah, Scott was a pop music major. She was musical theater. I was an opera major. Um, Kevin Kevin was actually pre med. Mitch, I didn't go Mitch, to college. Mitch, Mitch, right when he graduated high school, he he joined okay. the group. Ah, cool. Well, I went to Berkeley College of Music and. I study vocal performance there. Any advice for people who want to continue singing with their voice changed due to puberty? Oh, oh I don't need to say anything for that, so. Oh, man. Um, well, Scott, you want to go first? Oh, yeah, sure. I just um, took voice lessons with this teacher that, like, specialized in puberty. And because <laughs> my voice went from so high to really low. Obviously not obvi low, but um, and it was hard for me. And there was, like, a good two years where I was a mess. But it's all about exercising your voice and like really working through it. Yeah. And also, oh, sorry, go ahead. Also, like, not trying to be something that you're not. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like, like, what, well, see, the thing is, is that when I actually fell in love with singing, I was already a bass. So that was just kind of my mindset. I was like, well, I'm a bass, so I'm a bass, and I love being a bass. But if I, like, if I would have started as a tenor and, like, was, like, seeing solos as a tenor and, like, all excited about that thing, <laughs> then I would have, and then I would have turned into a bass and I would have been like, what the heck is this? <laughs> can't, I mean, you can't do any of that stuff Let's anymore. all be real. Avi came out of the womb as a bass. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, some of you are classically trained. Uh, all of you have obviously invested years in developing and honing your skills as vocalists. Uh, one of. I want to get a little bit serious now, but I have to ask you how important you think it is, uh, certainly from a grassroots point of view, you know, think about kids who are in high school, or preschool, all kinds of stuff, but like, um, how important is it to start learning young? I know what I'll say is that 
I don't think you need musical education necessarily to make it in the industry. There's a lot of people that have not had musical education, and they do really, really well. But the thing that musical education does do is that it gives you choices to figure out how do I want to make my music, how do I want to do what I want to do. And those choices, I think that's the number one thing that you need. Because you can, I think that way, direct your own career. You can create the music, you can create the, you know, the entrepreneurship that you want. But as, as vocalists, I mean, how important is it? I mean, I, people in this room will know, some people, a few small people, the amount of people in this room will know, I'm tone deaf, okay? I cannot sing to save my life, all right? But, you know, it's, it's important for you guys, certainly, to be able to, you know, have pitch and all that. But you, is that something that's learned, or is that something that you guys have just picked up? I think that there's obviously natural ability that has to that someone has to have, but also it's definitely very learned. And I feel like I didn't even realize I was learning it, because we, where we grew up in Arlington, Texas, and we had an amazing music program in our elementary schools and our high school, like everyone would transfer to our high school to be in the music program. And you know what's sad? Most high schools have that, that's all cut out now. Budget cuts, you know? And that's the first thing to go is music, sadly. It's true. Music, instruments, you know, bands, uh, that's the first thing to go. Computer class, I guess that's another one. But yeah, no, I, I've, I've, it's a shame because many schools don't have these programs anymore. And I guess already back then they didn't. And he's already saying everybody was rushing to this school because no, they weren't rushing. It's they were rushing to the, okay, they were rushing to their school because they were probably one of the few that had a music uh, class, you know, program. And I, I, we just kind of fell into it. And I, we were learning solfege. It was just something I like to do, so it was part of all the classes, and we went solfege, and we learned all this stuff. And then when I went to college for music, I was so far ahead of everyone in my class, and I didn't realize it. And it wasn't because I was more talented than them, it was because I had learned so much in those music programs. And so now when I hear about, like, actually in Arlington, Texas specifically, places cutting music programs in elementary schools, my old elementary school cut the music program, and I'm just, like, really bummed because I feel like it gave me such an advantage. And I, like, I attribute a lot of my success to having learned all that. And so it does bum me out to hear that. People, that's getting cut. Well, that's yeah. when your brain is the most developmental as well. That's when you're taking in the most information that you can. Definitely. That's kind of molding you for the future. So, I would say it's pretty important to have that early yeah. on. I also feel that it starts like with being passionate about it, and you can go seek that opportunity. Because like we were lucky, I did transfer to Martin because I wanted to. Um, take advantage of the, the music and theater program there. But I mean, I have really amazing voice teachers as well growing up. I feel like if like there are opportunities other places, I think um, music in schools can be more prominent, can be more of a thing, and a lot of people are cutting it. I remember even when we were at Martin, yeah. there was like a big thing about a big meeting. We were all talking about all writing letters about um, how important it was. Um, but I think the opportunities are everywhere. If people learn differently, whether it's in class, whether it's an individual teacher or in group, you know. I think opportunities are not everywhere. But also, a lot of times in shows, the singers get to take a break while the like band just plays interludes and songs. And it's just a lot more singing. And even when we're not singing solos, we're singing background parts. So it's nonstop, just belting it out. And so our voices get really tired. And the sad part about that is if one person's voice gets tired, the whole thing kind of falls apart because we need every part. Every part is so crucial. Very true. A lot sleep of sleep and water. Those are the two biggest things. Mm -hmm. Those are like so crucial. Crucial. Kevin yeah. drinks lemon juice. Yeah, he does. Lots of lemon juice for Kevin, mm -hmm. and he very rarely gets sick. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh, I mean, lemon is an antibacterial and an antiviral, so it just helps you not say, um, not not get sick. And because all of you are using only your voices as your instrument, that takes a huge toll. I can imagine, and you really need to recoup. You have to take mm -hmm. care of your vocal cords. Mm -hmm. What is it that you guys do specifically? Because there's so much use of your vocal cords. Yeah. I know this. Lemon juice. Oh. To put these songs out there, and especially to go on tour. How do you oh. keep them in good shape? Drink so much Drink water. so much water. Like, hyperhydrate. That's like the number one thing. It's like, like, a like disgusting amounts. <laughs> like our tour manager will be like, we'll go into a green room before we get there and yeah. be like make sure there's like 72 bottles of water <laughs> because that's probably how many we'll need for that day <laughs> yeah it, we we just consume a lot of water and get a ton of sleep and just try to stay healthy mm -hmm. when yeah you learn about a lot about yourself i feel like as as we've been touring like i used to like want to hang out all the time but sometimes if my voice is really tired i have to like be like okay i'm gonna go to bed and just like chill out so yeah. you kind of figure it out it's different for every person
Uh, I've cried on stage one time because my I was so sick, no sound would come out, and I remember it was the first song, and I turned away from the audience and was just started crying. No way. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. It yeah, was so. it was when I was so so sick, was like no sound. No, I haven't sick a lot. If we're gonna name all the shows, I'm gonna be like, not that one. <laughs> it was. Uh, I cheered up on stage whenever it's like. It was like a Kentucky. Like a crazy. Oh, oh gotcha. You would cry. What do you do when somebody is sick? Because you are the instruments. Oh man. We've you dealt know, with we've it a lot before, actually. It. I think we just kind of. Well, when we're on tour, we kind of mold the set to them. Okay. So we take yeah. away their solos, or you know. Just in case also have the audience the, sing. You have the crowd sing along. Yeah. And yeah. Add yeah. new different things. We've know. never had like more than one person sick at a time. Knock, Knock on wood. On wood. <laughs> <laughs> and we've never canceled a show. Wow. We've never canceled a show. Never canceled a show. What do you physiologically do to protect your voice box? Oh, I mean, lemon juice. You know, oh, like hydrate. I, I know that's such like a cliche answer, hydrate, but people don't even realize that they're not hydrating enough. Like, yeah. we, I feel like it took till our fourth tour to be like, yeah. Oh, now I can now I can yeah, control yeah, yeah. my voice. Exactly. And I always have to drink like a bunch of water the the day before. That's my main thing. I'm surprised no one's talking about bladders. Because if you're gonna drink a ton of water right before you go on stage, well maybe they're still young. Try that at my age, people. You'll be drinking a bottle and going, oh damn, bad idea. Mm -hmm. um, well, when you have to think later. like your your body and what you <laughs> intake. This is you're an instrument. So if you're gonna be eating pizza at four in the morning and drinking, <laughs> and then you wake up and do a show the next day, you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, I'm, in, I'm miserable. So you just have to properly, I mean, we're all much healthier than when we started. Yeah. We all drink much more water, we get much more sleep. Ooh, and, yes. We let the microphone do the work too. We, we sing a lot lighter on stage than we used to. We used to belt. Yeah. Like back yeah. when we were doing dog days and scream. stuff, I was getting oh like, full scream. I was screaming. It is crazy too how like, this might sound silly and everyone's like obviously but like when you give your body and your voice like a day of rest an actual day of rest it's amazing <laughs> yeah. how it can heal itself like it like truly is are you ever worried um if you get that feeling like i think i'm gonna be sick Constant. oh that's yes. the worst yeah. yes. what yeah. what do you do we go to the doctor immediately yeah. <laughs> we can't i feel like we just handle it immediately because yeah. we know our bodies so well and our voices so well that even if we start to feel it we know that something needs to be handled. Yeah, yeah. because if well, you because, don't, like, it's really bad. Well, and also, we're always constantly working, so you yeah. can't kind of be like, oh, I'll just kind of let it run its course, because yeah. there's no time right. to let it run its course. You have to kind of like get it while it's ahead, or yeah. Yeah. be kind of overanalyzing it, because there's no time to record. As a, as a bass singer, when I'm sick, I sing lower, so like, it's like yeah. cool. scratch everything I said. Matt so I'm like opposite. a little different, but I feel terrible. <laughs> <laughs> like, I could be like singing the lowest I've ever sung in my life, but I feel terrible. So it's like, it's like, what are you, what are you gonna do? Yeah. yeah, and talking about your voices, how do you take care of them? I was about to say that's a con. Yeah, the stress, that's a the con. stress of keeping your voice yeah. at a hundred percent can be overwhelming. We're like 32, 33 shows in now, and so just wow. like. And you always hear about all these artists like having to have surgeries and they have nodes and they have to go on vocal rest. Well, that's a thing for a reason. It's because they're using their voice so much. And we are definitely using our voice a lot too. Yeah. Well, not only because it's an acapella show, but because we're doing shows night after night. Right. Um, and so that's always a stress, but this has been a really good tour for it's us. Been in tours be before, has anyone almost kind of lost their voice in getting on stage? Was there a fear all of that yes. happening? All of all of yeah. So what happens when that, that, that scenario happens? Do you guys... You so put your finger all pants right. on. You just and you, you, you shorten the show. You shorten and the you, show. And you cut okay. certain songs. We've had soloists, <laughs> which we've rearranged things right before the show. Before mm -hmm. it and you gets kind of just so have to like stressful. do your best yeah. because it's all, it's obviously like really sad to go on stage and feel like you can't perform adequately or do your best. But everyone just tries to kind of cover it. You just have to put a big smile on because honestly, because it is five people and because it's more about the you know the overall thing. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. you just have to play for the overall. Team yeah. as opposed to caring about what yourself, what you, what you are going through. Does that make sense? Our fans yeah. are really patient too. They're super patient when someone has like uh, when their voice is at eighty percent or something. We're always like, like sing. <laughs> 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 They're ready to sing. A lot of our fans are singing yeah. still. What's the most difficult part when you're on tour? Because I know that there is I mean, it, it, buses voice. and things, and it's yeah. yeah, just staying healthy, maintaining yeah. vocal health, for right. sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but we and sleep so much on the road. You do. Yeah. Oh yeah. But then, like your bus is going to different altitudes, so you can sometimes get sick. And it, it, what's funny is, like, if you have a three-show run right. and you get sick. 
then you sing on a sick voice, which damages yeah. your voice a little bit, and then you don't have any time to recover. So trying to stay, like, keep your voice immaculate is, like, the trick. I mean, it's <laughs> obvious, it's though, too. You guys can't hide behind anything. No. Yeah. Right. What is it? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Kind of what you got. Yeah. 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 Exactly. No crap. Um, but do you, do you do things, like, every day to keep your voice in condition? Let's say, you know, you have... Oh, my God. This question was asked, what, uh, 50 times, I'd imagine. At the end of the day, they're probably like, oh, okay keep hydrating and we rest a lot you know like uh, again with that question i guess it's an important question everybody's concerned everybody's concerned you have like a hiatus of like you know a few months but would you still try to kind of maintain what do you do you know depending sometimes it's nice to give your voice a break too mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> so i feel That's like in, the, in, in those times it's nice just to kind of like relax and mm-hmm. lay low mm-hmm. um but so how long how long would, would that be about well, we don't really get a lot of breaks. <laughs> We're always working. The but, longest, um, I would say, maybe a month. Like a yeah. month. Half a month to a month. And so you won't, you'll just stay away from singing? No singing, yeah. practically, yeah. yeah. Right, right. But We're right. always What's singing because we love singing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not at all. I don't know how you physically stay in that voice every show. How do you do that? Like, how do you sustain? You're using only you. You can't even be like... You know, like, throw it to the guitars for an interlude. Like, there's nothing. And it's just the entire time you are using your voice. Even when someone else is singing, you guys are doing the other harmonies. Like, I don't understand what you need to do to prepare or how that just works every time. (laughs) Yeah, well, thank you. Um, I think we know the answer. I'm really diligent about taking care of my voice. um, Because when I was in my early 20s, I wasn't (laughs) diligent about anything specifically health wise. Um, but now I, you know, it's, it is, it's what I do. It's my instrument. And also sure. not only does it make me money, but it also makes me happy to sing. I also enjoy it. And I would, um, you know, hate to lose that ever. So I take really good care of it. Um, we've performed so much. We've done so many shows that I think it was sort of a strengthening and conditioning era for a couple of years. And now we've figured out how to pace ourselves vocally. It's almost something that I can't even explain because it's just through the process of doing it so much. Your voice intuitively falls into these places where it's an endurance thing. It is. I mean, it's kind of athletic. It's the only thing athletic that I do in my life. (laughs) How has singing acapella with PTX prepared you vocally for your new EP love? I'm so thankful that I've had um, the background that I've had with pentatonics. And also I've just been singing so long that it's just been good practice, I feel like. Although I know I I worked with a vocal coach the other day and I've definitely developed some bad habits. I do something weird with my mouth just to like make sure I'm hitting the note. And it doesn't even honestly help, but it's just a bad habit. But the vocal coach brought it up and I was like, oh, I know I do that. (laughs) So I definitely have bad habits, but good habits too, I guess. I have like a nerdy singer question for you. I feel like I can look back on moments that were like vocal breakthroughs for me. Like I learned, like I was thinking, like when I learned A Long Walk by Jill Scott, I was like, oh my God, like this is pocket. I finally understand. And it like clicked something in me. Like mm-hmm. I, I kind of want to ask you this too, Scott, but like do you have m- vocal memories of like a transitional moment where like your voice went from one place to another like I just remember the first time I sang in an arena ever I was like <gasps> and then like I had to learn how to like breathe out and like that changed my singing forever like, yeah, kind of, yeah. like a certain calmness mm-hmm. yeah you know like just for like singers listening and for me who's curious <laughs> do you um, have examples of those honestly I feel like I've battled through <laughs> just the overuse of voice, obviously, like yeah. on tour and improper singing. Oh my god! Well, you guys, and- by the way, it's an, I can't even imagine that many hours, and you literally never stop singing for a moment. I know, I know. It's, it's not normal for a human to do that. So <laughs> I, I feel like I learned, like after 2018, I was like, I was using like the vocal straw. I just feel like I finally put things into my life that were right. teaching me new things. Like, right. you, you you go and you're like, oh, I know how to sing and it's fine. And, like, obviously you could take more voice lessons and, like, yeah. grow and be better. But I was just like, oh, it, you know, I don't have time or whatever yeah. about it. And um, I feel like, honestly, within the last year or, I guess, two years now because I don't even know what day it is. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like my voice has changed and it feels a lot cleaner. It feels like mm. in a lot, it sits in a lot better and healthier place yeah. Um, where before I know that I was just always struggling and even just with like allergies just traveling around so Mm. much before I feel like it didn't really lock in until 
like the last two years or so. And I feel like I haven't even really been that sick. So 2018, 2020, 2024 now, so it's basically the last six years. What do I say when I usually, because we've been watching tons of PTX videos on his channel. And from the beginning to today, what do I almost always say in every video at the end? How the hell are they still getting better? How do they sound better? How do they do this? And there's your answer. <laughs> there's your answer. They really are getting better. They really do get better. They are finding their true final voice, I guess, as we just keep going, as they keep getting older, more mature, especially over here, more mature. And, and I hear it. I hear it. I'm sure you guys do as well. But uh, I think, yeah, she just, that was a good question. That was a great question. Or that like miserable. Totally. I, yeah. I've heard words, I would but... agree with that because I relate to that. In the past two years, I feel like I finally figured out oh, all of you actually have. genuinely of... how much I need to hydrate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then also I just sing shows at a fourth of the volume and I use, oh, interesting. and I use like way less air. Mm -hmm. I, I used to take these big mm -hmm. breaths before yeah, belting. Totally. Mm -hmm. You don't really need that. They actually like mm -hmm. make your cords activate in an unhealthy way. The air is pushing against them. Yeah. You and don't so, want all that air build up underneath. That mm -hmm. was such an aha moment for me. That was an aha moment yeah. for me. And so now I just like have so much more stamina because I yeah. sing lighter and the microphone does so much of the work. You don't mm -hmm. have to be belting exactly. your face exactly. off. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I feel like you just learn that with experience, too. And yeah. just, I feel like, personality-wise and where I'm at just in my life, like, I'm so much more easygoing than right. I was in the past, too. So there's also that, because if you're of holding course, a lot of tension absolutely. in your body mm -hmm. or your throat, I, I like, if I am getting upset, the first thing that tenses is my throat. Yeah. And it is a nightmare, and it hurts. And then, you know, obviously, if you're trying to sing yeah, over that, like, I swear to God, it's miserable. This is, like, bad advice, and please don't listen to me, any <laughs> singers out there, but I swear sometimes, as long as I'm, like, singing healthy normally, uh -huh. a night out where I, like, rage and yeah. like laugh all night long and have like the greatest time laughing and dancing and I'm singing a, and having uh, fun the next day i sing amazing oh that is odd oh, like, oh like, that is yeah. not normal i thought yeah. you were gonna say the opposite because i was like that happens to me too i laugh really hard oh, and really loud like, and probably incorrectly i don't yeah. know but then i wake oh up and i'm like I swear no. to God, I, swear, and I mean, obviously, if like I'm doing it constantly, that's not good. But if I'm like a healthy person singing while doing, taking care of myself, and then I have like a night of just like fun. But also you're raging day, and you're quote unquote fun. <laughs> it's like, ooh, I had a little sip of a Paloma and went that's to bed at true. nine. She's like, I'm that still in bed before true. midnight. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was like, no you're the worst thing, honestly, <laughs> the worst thing is when I go to like a restaurant and I don't even that's realize I'm screaming yes. for three that's hours. Worst, yeah. I mean, and then I'm like, like why is my voice so tired today? And I'm like, oh, I was Yelled screaming. for four hours. <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally. yeah. Oh, can't wait to yell in a restaurant again. Oh, I me know. too. Oh, I can't wait to ruin my vocal cords. Doesn't that sound nice? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, there, Kevin can sing very well. Sing. Yeah, yeah. Um, if there that. were to be a single from this room right now, I know I can count myself out. Which person in the band is the best singer? Me, Mitch. Mitch. For sure. No, Kevin, for sure. <laughs> well, we all have very Mitch, different Mitch, voices, Mitch, but Mitch. technically, Mitch is the best singer for yeah. sure. Yeah. Thank you. When everyone. you say technically, what do you mean? Like you've got like the just, range. Just accuracy. Like in every way. <laughs> singers always like really. Okay. Yeah. Singers always appreciate other singers for their just vocal accuracy, being able to sing just so on point. That's why we're all so obsessed with Tori Kelly. Cause she's oh, just the best singer ever. Yeah. And Mitch has that vibe. What are the most Nick. difficult wow. sounds to reach? I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even know the lingo. What is like the most difficult thing to do with your voice to imitate? You know, I something mean, else. I'm singing there. whistle notes really, really accurately and like yeah. riffing in the whistle register is <laughs> extremely difficult. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it all depends on what voice you have, like what voice type right. and what you're trying to do with it. Um, yeah, I, I think it really just depends. Yeah. What are your favorite and most effective vocal warm ups? This is going to be fun. Oh. And they want, you, they want you to act them out. Okay. <laughs> no, they don't. I just put that in there. Oh. <laughs> if you could. Um, I like just scales. <laughs> This one I do over and over. Get it. Oh, that was so cool. <laughs> Mitch's scales on iTunes now. Um, <laughs> no, I do this really annoying warm up. I try to get away from everyone because it's really embarrassing, but I, I try to sing the same, belt the same note on seven different volume levels. So I'll be like, whoa. Ah, 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 and I like.
like do it, and it's really annoying and obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> have you been told it's annoying, or you just assume? No, that? but Mr. Right. Kirsty always make fun of me. It's just funny. It's, it's, it's just funny. Too. We're not making fun of you. We're just laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, because anyone doing really anyone doing warm ups and close quarters is funny because we're just making so it's much like noise, what? and we're like, oh. You, you know, know ironically, <laughs> the person who warms up the most is Kevin. True. Yeah, the all day long. Harder. Yeah, well, I've also been realizing, so, like, after a show, for some reason, I'm more warmed up than I am when I start it, and it's, I think, because, like, we beatbox so much, and it's like a vocal warm-up, so now, before shows, I beatbox for probably, like, an hour, just, just beatbox, and it gets me really, really warmed up. Does anybody do Science. the thing anymore? I do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah? Oh, lip trills are everything, yeah. Uh, I would start with that. Lip triller. Right. Lip triller. I feel like there's a, lot, there's a lot of spit involved in that, though. <laughs> triller. A lot of mucus. That dog is good. You hear him? Sometimes Pascal, when I do lip drills, oh, specifically awesome. warming up. Oh, I, I've been doing them in the house. It first started when I was in New York and I was warming up for my shows. And all of a sudden, I would just hear, <laughs> and I would turn around and Pascal would be doing it with me. That's I've been awesome. sucking on lemons before That's every awesome. show. Well, we only had two, but um, it like really clears my throat. Oh, lemon, lemon. You listen to Kevin. TMI, but I have a lot of phlegm in the throat, Neonce. <laughs> and this kind of just thins it out. Breaks it up. Mm. And then I sing my little heart out. And it's been working? It's been working just fine. <laughs> oh god, that's really bad. I would say mine is the most expensive. Yeah. It's Scotty over So here. cocky. Or maybe you. I because you can go real low. I can go real low. But <laughs> a high the highness. The hearness? The hear you want to... the, the hearness? <laughs> the hearness? Uh, you wouldn't be able to hear from Do there. Wah. Wait. Yeah, it's like <laughs> sub-acoustic. Oh. <laughs> That's what happens when you wake up at 4 a.m. You're right. That's yeah, exactly right. what happens when you wake up at 4 a.m. How low can you go? Um, it depends on the day. Right. Yeah. Today? Today? Probably B flat. B flat. Can I hear a bit of a B flat? You sing a B flat. <laughs> Wow, that's low. That did something to my internal organs, and I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good, good. That's, funny. Uh, that's um, my job. Have you measured the lowest note you can hit? Um, right now, it's probably a low A. A low A? What's a low A sound like? Yeah. Um, Matt, how low can you go when you're not sick? When I'm not sick, probably the lowest um, comfortably is a B1. Um, a1. When I'm sick, who knows? <laughs> sick. The world is a it's so funny. Me and my friend, one of my good friends, Tracy Robertson, we're like, we're, we're, whenever we're, we're both singers, we're both bass singers. So whenever we're sick, we send each other videos in the morning. <laughs> we're like, we sing, we're like, like, yeah. <laughs> <We're> like <laughs> It's, it's like so funny. It's like, who can sing the best sick, you know? <laughs> What's it like? What's it like? <laughs> it must be nice. It must be, it must be nice. And, and Mitch, your, your highest note, you're like the falsetto here. My highest note? Do, who has the higher voice between the, to, to, between the three of you? All, all three of you have a, a, a pretty decent falsetto. I don't know. You have Scott a huge sometimes. range. Yeah. Scott's it, range is We all sound different. We can bigger, all sing about I feel like. the same. Yeah. I know. Actually, he has the highest note. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, whatever. You got it. Yeah, no, sometimes he, I didn't know that. He's like killing these false out of notes. Yeah. Do it. Oh, <laughs> he'll, he'll hit a high note and then you match it and then we'll just keep going. So. Okay. okay. Are you ready? Wait, I've heard you sing and you can like shatter glass. Yeah, you can. So, I have been known to shatter I glass. Wait, wait, wait. Should we just get to it? Yeah, let's okay. go for it. So, are you ready? Mm hmm. Should I start simple? Yeah. La, la, okay. La, Oh, I didn't know that was going. <laughs> so, uh, Scott, how high can you go? Alright, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, let's do this. We'll go back and forth. 
Let's see how, who can go higher. Oh, God. You just go oh. one step up, all right? Yeah, you start, and then I'll, <clears throat> yeah. La, 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 la. I'm a baritone, okay? I don't belong up there. Can, can I hear a high note from each one of you? Yeah. Could, could we just, just something high, really quick? Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I don't even know if I. <laughs> can't even reach that. Really? That that's pretty high. I don't know. Can, can you hit that? <laughs> wow. Abby, that's, that's high high note. <laughs> it's a whistle, whatever. <laughs> really, really incredible. You know, one one part of the. All right, Kirsty, can we hear how high you can go? Uh, I don't dare challenge you, but. No, Mitch can sing way higher. No, Kevin sings the high. Really? Kevin Wait, seriously? Yes. Kevin, let's go. La. Has the higher range, Mitch or Kirsten? Kevin. <laughs> I, I, I don't actually know. I, I don't know. Because sometimes it'll like be like hitting these yeah. super high notes. Well, you like, can oh. do real whistle notes. I just inhale and do like incorrect ones. <laughs> but you have really high notes. Uh, oh, yeah. Kevin, Kevin has Kevin a maybe. really high range. But so do you. Because Kevin goes so, really yeah, well. So the, yeah, I don't know. It's them. I think, no, I really think it's Mitch. I, I do not think it's me. No, I think it's <laughs> <laughs> Get there, but I'm, I'm like dying to get there. He can do it with like a really nice touch. Chirping the higher falsetto though. Yeah. I think uh, also, yeah. you guys have whistle notes. So she does. Yeah. I, you can sing whistle. higher. My whistle notes are bad. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, 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 Kevin. That's some pretty high notes. That's so bad. I doubt that. Nope. I tried it. I get maybe like maybe an A, but I cannot get it flat. That's hard though. Come on, boys. That's lesson. hard. It's not helping. I had one today. That was a great video. Ooh, I got a feeling some pentaholics are definitely going to enjoy that video. That was some good stuff, good info. A little repetitive, but that's okay because, again, these are questions that audience and people and interviewers want to know. And yeah, I guess that's like the top of the. The top-notch question is, you know, how do you take care of your voices? What happens when you get sick? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we get it. We get it. But this was a really good video. Uh, you know, I learned about lemon juice. Very important. I learned that Kevin is, I don't know if I, I st I'm still, I'm going with Mitch. I'm still going with Mitch. Uh, but I did not know Kevin could hit high notes like that. Uh, yeah, I'm still going. I I'm sticking with Mitch. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, you know, great people, great personalities, great interviews equals a great video. There you go. Especially done by a great, no, I'm not going to say it. All right. Anyway, take care. Peace out. Have a good night. That was a good one. Mr. Patreon. Or was it Mrs.? I forgot. <laughs>